Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here and welcome to this next lesson in the C++ series. In this lesson, we're going to be revisiting the virtual keyword. Now in a previous lesson, we talked about what virtual is and virtual member functions and how they enable us to make sure that we're calling the right member functions in our classes. This is enabled or rather enables the mechanism in C++ of dynamic dispatch, but this idea that when you have a derived class from a base class, you'll call the correct member function. So let's go ahead and look at an example to review this. So I've got above me the drawing that I made in a previous lesson here, just showing that we have a base class here and a derived class, which inherits from the base and derived is a type of base. And both of them have this same member function as part of them. So in order to get this to work, that is, if I'm just creating a pointer to anything that is a type of base, so that includes derived and base itself, but at runtime, if we decide, hey, I actually want derived here, when I call the member func here, since I have two here, I want to override the behavior of base here. And this function here, by marking it virtual, tells C++, hey, at runtime, make sure to call the right member function. And within C++, there's something called a vtable that's managing or keeping track of which function to call. And that ensures, again, that we call the right function here when we override the behavior. And then, of course, we need to delete our instance, which calls the uh, destructors to destroy our object, or does it? So that's what we want to talk about in this video here. So I'm going to actually compile this code and run it. So at the least, you can see that because we have our derived class, which inherits from base, we're calling both of the constructors. So no problem there. Uh, that's something that we've seen in this series when we've been learning about inheritance. So if you need a review on that, go ahead and back up a few lessons to the inheritance examples. Now, again, because we're using the uh, or overriding this function, and we have a function here marked virtual, which essentially means it can be replaced from a derived class the correct member function is being called here derived member func because again we're creating a new derived instance of an object but what's interesting here is when i call delete here to reclaim my memory on instance we see that the base destructor is called and again this sort of has the same problem that we saw before where i don't have base marked as virtual because really we do need to be calling the destructor for derived. In fact, we need to be calling both of them. So just to make this clear what the correct use case is, I'm going to go ahead and comment out this stuff where we're not doing anything fancy. That is essentially at this line 18 here, creating a type at runtime of derived. Instead, let's just back up and do something uh, simple, like just create uh, our derived class here, for example. So when we did this, we saw that the base constructor was called, the drive constructor was called, and the drive destructor and the base uh, destructor as well in this particular order. And this makes sense. Again, if a derived class is building on top of base, we need to construct it from base and then derived and then destroy it from the derived class as well as anything that we do in the base class. So let me go ahead and do an example here to show what could be going on here. So for example, let's say in our uh, base class here, we allocate some memory from one of the member functions here. And I'll go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and do this. Uh, here, I'll just create some uh, integer here. Let's just call it a member. I'll just call it base data. And maybe in our constructor, for instance, we'll do base data equals new uh, int and have 10 of them. And I could go ahead and make this a little bit bigger just so everything can fit on one screen. Um, so it's pretty clear here that we're just allocating some more memory and we would want to make sure that we destroy in our destructor. So let's make sure that we delete our base data. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing in our derived class here. I'm just going to create some uh, data here. Derived data. And let's just go ahead and instantiate it so that we have a little bit of data here. Derived data equals new int maybe uh, 15 integers for this one. And in the destructor, we need to delete using the bracket notation our derived data. And let me go ahead and just take uh, a moment to make this a little bit nicer so that you can actually read the code by adding a little bit of uh, indentation here. So let's just go ahead and do this. And for our destructor, we'll go ahead and do the same thing just so you can read it. 
And just after a moment, we have something reasonable. So again, I'm just allocating some memory in the constructors here and deleting them and so on. So let's go ahead and recompile this. I'll go ahead and rerun it. And we can see that everything runs. If I run this with a tool like Valgren, which checks for memory leaks, it's going to say, hey, there were a few uh, allocations here, but all the heap allocations that are the things that we're doing with new have been freed appropriately. OK. So we have, again, the sort of baseline of what things should look like in the correct uh, circumstance. But again, if I heap allocate an object and I take advantage of this idea of inheritance-based polymorphism, where I can decide that my instance can be either base or derived, I need to, again, make sure that I'm cleaning up all the memory here. So let's go ahead and uh, look at this program once more. And I'll uh, recompile it with these changes. I'll rerun it. And again, we'll see that that derived class destructor is not being called, only the one from the base here. So if I run this with a program like Valgren, we should see that, well, we lost 60 bytes of data. That would be these 15 integers, four bytes each, that have not been properly called from the destructor of derived. So how do I make sure that the destructor will be called? Well. In order to do this, we actually make our base class virtual. OK, so that is what we do to ensure that C++ is essentially going to add to this base class, um, or rather add to our derived class an additional call to the virtual uh, destructor here. So let's go ahead and run it. Uh, and first, I'll just run it as normal. And here now we can see the derived destructor is being called and the base destructor. So if I go ahead and verify this with Valgren, which is a program that checks for memory leaks, we'll now see that all the heap blocks were indeed freed. So again, making our destructors virtual essentially tells C++ that because we have this base class, and this is sort of specific for um, our destructors here that we are creating here, base here, this instance, that instead of just calling this destructor here, we're going to have to look further down our inheritance hierarchy, see what our actual type is, and then make sure that we call all the destructors leading up to that. Because if we're allocating memory in each of these uh, different classes here, we want to make sure that we reclaim it. So again, that was the base data and the derived data. Now, again, just a general class design tip. You'll notice that where I'm allocating memory in the base class, I am, again, trying to follow the rules of RAII. And again, you can watch a previous video about that uh, in this series. But this idea that I'm not ever allocating uh, or deallocating base data in the derived class, for instance, because that's where things start to get messy. So I try to just keep the data, uh, this base data here, anything that I would be allocating, constrained or encapsulated into this base class. Again, that'll just make your design a lot simpler to follow and to ensure that you uh, reclaim all of your memory. And by making your base class destructors virtual, this will ensure that they're called, and then the constructor can do the construction of your data and the destructor the proper destruction of any data along your inheritance hierarchy. All right, folks, so hopefully that helps you with one of the things that's a common mistake and something that I think beginners often get confused with and even more advanced programmers in C++ with understanding why to make the destructors virtual, to make sure that it's called when you're using inheritance-based polymorphism. Or in other words, when you're creating a base pointer and instantiating it as some other derived class type. So folks, I hope this is a useful lesson. I hope it helps you pass some C++ interview next time you're trying to uh, get a C++ job. And if you're finding these videos helpful, make sure that you hit like and make sure you comment below if you have more questions about how this works or, again, why we do this. Thanks for your time, and we'll see you in the next video.